Welcome to the Klemco Setup Guide for Single Chamber Blast Machines for One Operator. This video covers preparing the worksite, connecting hoses, preparing to start the machine, starting to blast, and ending the blast operation. This video is not a replacement for reading the Single Chamber Blast Machine for One Operator Owner's Manual, which should be read in full by anyone who uses these machines. Failure to comply with the instructions in the Owner's Manual can result in severe injury or even death. Preparing the Worksite Place the blast machine on even, firm ground. Take note of the direction of the wind. Be sure to locate the air compressor upwind of the blasting operation. This helps prevent contaminated air from entering the compressor intake. Important! Make sure to follow all local laws. It may be necessary to have an enclosure for your blast site with an appropriate dust filter system. Connecting the Hoses Open the petcock on the RMS2000 or RMM50 remote control. An open petcock prevents the blast pot from accidentally starting during setup. Uncoil the blast hose and then lay the twin line hose alongside it. The hoses should be of equal lengths and laid as straight as possible. If necessary, cut the blast hose to the length needed. Important: A straight cut on the blast hose is necessary to make sure that the gaskets correctly seal. Next, band the RLX Deadman handle to the blast hose close to the nozzle holder. Use two nylon or other appropriate ties. After the control is firmly attached, clip the tie ends so that they do not snag the operator's clothing or interfere with the operation of the control handle. Connect the remote control hose, yellow and brown, to the corresponding nipples of the dead man handle. The brown hose is connected to the inlet, labeled with the number one on the dead man handle. The yellow hose is connected to the outlet, labeled with the number 2. Corresponding numbers also are labeled on the RMS2000 remote control unit hose connections. Tighten the remote control hoses until they are wrenched tight. Warning! Incorrectly reversing the connections of the remote control hoses will cause malfunctions that can lead to injuries. Working from the control handle back, band the twin line hose to the blast hose every 1 to 2 meters. Warning! Do not over-tighten the zip clips. When the twin line hose is pressurized, it could become damaged if it does not have room to expand. Check the coupling gasket for wear and make sure all gaskets are in place. Attach the blast hose to the blast machine and make sure the safety pin locks are in position. An optional safety cable may be used. Connect the twin line hose, yellow and brown, to the corresponding twin line hose coming from the RMS2000 or RMM50 remote control valve. Warning! Incorrectly reversing the connections of the hoses will cause malfunctions that can lead to injuries. Choose an appropriate nozzle and attach it to the nozzle holder with a gasket. Place a nozzle washer in the nozzle holder. The nozzle must seat tightly against the nozzle washer. Connect the CPF air filter to the RMS2000 remote control.
Removing oil and water from the compressed air supply may require anything from a moisture separator to an after-cooler air dryer, depending on the degree of moisture. Preparing to start the machine. Close the abrasive metering valve completely. If the blast machine is equipped with a PT pneumatic metering valve, read the PT owner's manual for more information about closing the metering valve. Pour abrasive into the concave head of the blast machine, which is the filling port of the machine. Use a screen to prevent coarse objects that may jam the machine from entering the pressure vessel. Next, close the petcock on the remote control valve. Open the choke valve on the piping. The machine will not blast if the choke valve is closed. Open the abrasive metering valve little by little and adjust it for the proper air abrasive blend. Most blasting operations do not need the metering valve completely open. Note, an appropriate adjustment will create a light stream of abrasive exiting the nozzle. Open the compressor's air valve. Adjust the moisture separator drain so that a constant stream of liquid and air is expelled under pressure. Blast operators and anyone else who may be exposed to the hazards of abrasive blasting must wear appropriate protective gear. If the helmet has an air control valve, you can use it to adjust air volume. Besides a blast helmet, Klimco recommends that operators wear leather gloves, heavy-duty work shoes, ear protection, and a blast suit with leather trim on the front. Starting to blast. Point the blast nozzle at the surface to be blasted and press the dead man handle to start blasting. Blast until the pot is nearly empty of abrasive. Do not blast until the pot is completely empty because this increases wear. Ending the blast operation. Empty all abrasive from the pot if it will not be used the next day. Abrasive stored in the pot may absorb moisture which can lead to clumping of abrasive and then wear on the machine. Likewise, empty the blast hose of abrasive. Note, in humid climates, it might be necessary to cover the blast pot at night while the pot is not in use to protect it from moisture. Correct operation of Klimco's single chamber blast machines for one operator is necessary to protect blast operators and others who are near the machines from blasting and inhalation hazards that can cause severe injury or even death. The purpose of this video has been to familiarize viewers with how to set up and begin operating these machines. However, this video is not a replacement for reading the single chamber blast machine's owner's manual, which should be read in full by anyone who uses a Klimco single chamber blast machine for one operator.